The Evil Within, spearheaded by Shinji Mikami, the guy that brought you games like Resident Evil 4, Dino Crisis, and even Devil May Cry. Mikami takes a break from Capcom with his own game studio to create this dark survival horror. I'm just playing it now, even though it came out in 2014 because it flew right under my radar. Atmosphere in this game is actually terrifying. It's one of those games where I actually have to force myself to play it because it makes me uncomfortable. If you are a fan of games like this, you will like The Evil Within. The environments here are totally grisly and unwelcoming, reminiscent of games like Silent Hill, mainly Silent Hill 2. It's also a little bit like amnesia in the depth of darkness it provides through its environments. I go as far as to call this game a hidden gem, even though there is quite a bit of hubbub surrounding it and its community because of the well-known developer. I've yet to play The Evil Within 2, but I know it is by a different developer. Some have said it's a largely improved experience than the first game, but I can't comment on it just yet. The Evil Within 1 goes toe to toe with games like Silent Hill, Amnesia, or Soma for its atmosphere and sound design. The minutia of the environment is amazingly gritty, detailed, dark, and rich. Some of the themes held within are too grisly and evil to put into words. In a word, it's very dark. I received the same type of feeling playing Amnesia. All I could think was, Jesus, this is a gruesome world. Unlike a lot of horror games that contain somewhat a cartoony environment that can pull you away from the horrific experience like Resident Evil, this game has realistic details that are absolutely disgusting. From the nasty pulsations of flesh and veins within mechanic walls to the stark contrasty textures of blood and rust encrusted walls. Think of the animations like a blood-filled tick that swell up and burst in blood everywhere with realistic details. Something you wouldn't really want to see but is like a train wreck in which you don't want to look away. It plays heavily on these types of details to create the ambience and setting within the game. It's the harsh, contrasty, gory details of this game that separate it from, say, a Resident Evil game, which in my opinion have somewhat of a cartoonish unrealism that subtracts from the experience. Actually, there were a few moments while I was playing through this game where I was thinking the creator of this game is deranged for even coming up with some of this stuff. It's f***ing gross. Either that or he has seen some in his day. After you experience the intro of the mental hospital, you get dropped into one of the most gruesome environments that this game has to offer, and one of my favorite levels. Another sequence where the world is literally fractured apart, and you get to explore a post-apocalyptic city that shifts as you go through it. I've never seen anything like that in a game, and I found it breathtaking. I also like this game because you can play it stealthy, and don't have to engage the monsters head on, so it has that Metal Gear Solid tactical espionage feel to it. Although not as well done, but I love Metal Gear games or anything that comes close to its realism in stealth environment. That being said, the stealth element doesn't really hold up all the way through till the end because you are perpetuated into some action sequence without choice. The times you can stealth around are definitely cool and the AI seems to be very sensitive to its surroundings. Any small sounds of walking over bottles or trash will alert them to your coming. Think of the acres or proxy monsters from Soma. Everything in the world will be interactive in the sense that you can walk over it, it can make a small sound. This feature really helps the player get immersed into the world and actually care about their actions, for they can have unwanted consequences. Let me break down my experience with the Evil Within down into good and bad points. The good. The characters are rich in personality and very distinct. The voice acting is top notch. There are little to no cheesy lines because all the characters maintain their own wit. That which is the device of comedic respite during all the chaotic events that take place. The sound design is killer, filled with crispy gunshots and lots of burbling and gurgling, gory folly coming from your enemy. The enemy sounds are downright terrific. The music is well done. I'm going to say this a lot. Think of it as a mix between Silent Hill music and Resident Evil music. Mechanical cacophony and deranged sounds that almost sound like they are coming from a human. But something is seriously wrong. The story is rich without a lot that goes unsaid, which leaves the audience to ponder their own theories. It's somewhat ambiguous, yet holds enough information to keep the player intrigued. The monster design is downright gruesome and creatively done. Without saying too much, think of it as like James Sunderland from Silent Hill 2, and how all the monsters are amalgamations of his own psyche and the torment he has endured in his life. Finally, the graphics are very well rendered and realistically sharp, dark, gruesome, and terrifying. Here are some of the bad features that slightly annoyed me. There are your obvious plot holes, as in most video game stories. The main antagonist has somewhat of a cringe factor about him, like some angst teen that's having a bad day, and it's not 
not purposefully done this way. I think it's because it's, it was made by a Japanese developer. There are some values that get lost in translation. The game is very long. Now this could be a good thing for some. It's just for me, I felt as if it dragged on for a bit too long, but this could be just my conditioning to the survival horror titles that I've already played. I feel like they could have cut some of the material in the post. A lot of the enemies, the enemies can end up look, being your stereotypical Resident Evil zombie. Something that Silent Hill does differently is the enemies are so distorted they appear inhuman. Some of the zombies can feel like a Resident Evil zombie. The horror genre of games being an overly crowded market, most titles miss the mark in my opinion. It's the ones like this that keep the horror genre of games alive. It has at least somewhat an intriguing story with sound and graphics to reinforce its cause. Most people know it's not all about cheap jump scares, although they can be fun. The most important factors of creating a survival horror is building an interesting story and set of characters that engage empathy amongst its players and actually care about what's going on and be excited to see what's in store around the corner, both figuratively and literally. The Evil Within has a slow building tension and an immersion experience that helps to let you forget you are even playing a game. This quality is what I love most about survival horrors, like Silent Hill and in my opinion, what most Resident Evils lack. If you like survival horror games, definitely check this one out. Be warned though, it's fairly gory, hence its M rating. If I were to give this game a rating, I'm going to give it a solid B. The Evil Within has mostly everything you want in a survival horror. Crisp, clean action sequences, dark psychological horror that keeps the player engaged, creative monster design, a rich story that drops breadcrumbs along the way to lead to much a larger story retrospectively. Great music, great sound, amazing graphics, and enough comedic dialogues that prevents the game from just becoming too dark and unplayable. If you like this game or feel like I left something out in the review, feel free to comment your thoughts down below. This channel is fairly new and I plan on making more game reviews in this fashion. If you want to see more reviews like this, please be sure to subscribe and express your opinions in the comments section. Thanks. Like,